up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. In the last few videos, we've been talking about microphones, so today I thought it would be cool to show you how to set one up. While it may sound pretty self-explanatory, I think by the end of this video you'll have a deeper appreciation for the steps involved and how they can help protect some of this very expensive gear. Let's take a look at all of the gear we'll need. I have in front of me a microphone stand, a microphone, a microphone clamp or mount, an XLR cable, cable clamps, and cable ties. Before we begin, there are several different types of microphone stands, including tripod, tripod boom, low profile, round base, overhead, and desktop microphone stands. These can cost anywhere between $10 and $500, and just like anything else, you get what you pay for. For our purposes, tripod and overhead mic stands are the most useful. If you're new to this stuff, check the description for links to every single item used in this video. Some of these smaller things can go missing, especially in studio situations, so it's helpful to purchase extras and keep them in a safe spot if you can. Today, I'm using a tripod mic stand because this is what you'll likely be using the most in the context of percussion recordings, which is why we're here, right? Tripod stands consist of several different components. From the bottom up, you have the legs, the base, the main pole, height adjustment clutch, the T-nut, the boom arm, the boom arm clutch, which some have and some don't, and some sort of microphone clip, clamp, or mount, which varies depending on the type of microphone you're using. On a tripod stand, the first thing we need to do is stretch out the three legs of the stand until you feel them snap. Second, untighten the knob at the base of the stand, slide it all the way to the bottom, and retighten the knob. Some microphone stands may operate more like a snare drum stand, where you untighten the knob and all three extend at once, and that's cool too. Just get those legs extended and on the floor. Next, using the height adjustment clutch, extend the stand to the exact height that your heart desires and retighten. Using the T-nut, loosen the boom arm and adjust it so that the arm itself is parallel with one of the legs. If it's directly in between two of the legs, when weight is applied with the microphone, it could come crashing down, which is very bad, okay? Using the boom arm clutch, extend the boom arm to the length your heart desires and retighten. Next, if it's not already attached, find the microphone clamp for the specific type of microphone you're using, which should screw right into the end of the boom arm. Tighten it until it's pretty snug and use the boom arm clutch to fine tune the angle of the microphone clip. Grab your microphone and place it into the mic clip. Before tightening it, remember to double check its orientation based on the type of polar pattern your microphone has. The next step is wrapping the XLR cable securely around the mic stand, which can be done one of two ways. If you start from the bottom, it's harder to gauge the amount of cable you're going to need, and if you start at the top, you have to wrap the entire cable on your way down, which can be annoying. When starting from the bottom, grab the female end of your XLR cable, leaving the male side on the floor. Starting with plenty of slack, wrap the cable at least two complete times up the base of the main pole. From here, take out the slack until you think there's enough cable to loop around the T-nut and reach the microphone. Loop the cable around the T-nut and let it hang there for a second while you go and grab a cable tie and cable clamp. Secure the cable to the stand just onto the T-nut joint with a cable tie. Holding the microphone with your non-dominant hand, use the other to plug the XLR cable into the microphone. If you don't hold the microphone, that thing's gonna slip right out of there and hit the floor along with your bank account. Trust me, small details count here. You can also apply another cable tie on the boom arm if it makes you feel more secure. The reason we do this is to prevent the microphone from hitting the floor in the case that it falls out of the clamp. These few anchor points we've created will keep the microphone hanging in midair, along with our adrenaline levels. Trust me, there's no better feeling knowing that you saved the microphone's life when it fell out of that clamp. Seriously, it's empowering. 
When starting from the top, I'll again start with plenty of slack, but this time securing the remainder of the cable with a cable tie. This makes it a little bit easier to wrap around the stand as opposed to working with the entire cable unraveled. This time I'll start by plugging in the microphone and the rest is literally the same process only in reverse. If you're new to this, I would recommend setting it up both ways to determine which one you prefer. Remember that this isn't about speed, but rather safety. Microphones and recording gear are expensive, so take whatever precautions you can to protect them to increase their longevity. That is how you set up a microphone. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're enjoying this as much as I am, feel free to subscribe and turn those notifications on so you can catch the next one where we explore the audio interface. Until then, happy recording. Thank you.